Hello lovelies, in this video Tim is going to be looking at virtual romantic relationships for your A-level psychology. Now there are lots of things to remember in this video, so to help you remember all of the bits that you need to for your exams, over my website there is a massive course with loads of multiple choice questions to really really help you revise. <laughs> Sexual penetration theory states that intimacy, closeness and relationships develop and deepen in response to self-disclosure. Self-disclosure is sharing information about yourself as an act of trust and bonding. Johnson, working in 2001, found variances between how much and how fast this happens via the internet and physically face-to-face -face in person. In this particular experiment, undergraduate students participated in a laboratory study. They were placed in same-sex pairs and then asked to discuss an abstract dilemma. That's one with no real basis in fact, a completely hypothetical, theoretical problem. This was done to try and stimulate conversations between the participant pairs. The written transcripts of these conversations were read. They were then rated for self-disclosure how much participants disclosed information about themselves. Importantly, only unprompted self-disclosure, which wasn't relevant to the actual problem, included. This was done in two different ways, in a repeated measures design. Experiment 1 used a mix of face-to-face -face and online chat. Experiment 2 used entirely online chat, but with some video calling included. In both types of experiment, using online chat only proved to elicit much more self-disclosure than either video chat or in-person face-to-face conversation. The obvious conclusion drawn was that individuals are much more prepared to self-disclose over internet chat than other forms of communication. This was a laboratory experiment. There was excellent control of variables and it's highly unlikely that some sort of extraneous outside unknown factor influenced the results. The downside, however, is that there is very limited ecological validity, and it's impossible to say that people in a naturalistic environment would behave in the same way, given the same conditions. The participants were also in same-sex pairs. It's also unknown if the same results and the conclusions would therefore be drawn if the pairs were mixed or of opposing sexes. Another possible variable in forming relationships is self-awareness. In particular, it's been theorized that self-awareness may affect our ability to form virtual or online relationships. Self-awareness can be defined as being aware of and indeed paying attention to ourselves, our thoughts, our feelings, our behavior, our emotions, and our actions. There's two basic types of self-awareness, public and private. Public self-awareness is paying attention to how you appear and seem to others around you. Private self-awareness is how you seem to yourself. This is often known as looking inwards or even just introspection. Some further research done by Johnson back in 2001 suggests that levels of public and private self-awareness has an effect on how much we are then prepared to self-disclose. One important factor in all this is that chatting via computers or social media or just via the internet generally introduces at least a degree of anonymity. This makes it more likely we are less aware of ourselves and less aware of how we appear to others. It therefore makes it more likely that in these online settings and virtual relationships most of us are prepared to self-disclose more. Either we're less aware of ourselves, less aware of how we appear to others, or we just don't care how we appear to others because there is that degree of anonymity there. In 2002, McKenna, leading a group of researchers, looked into relationships that have been formed through the internet. Today, this is really normal. We all have access to social media. Many of us communicate with people we've never actually met face to face. In 2002, social media wasn't really around and the internet was in its infancy. So it was unusual and unique. Surveys were randomly sent to the users of some online forums. Chat rooms were at their peak in the early 2000s. These were usually unrelated to both psychology or dating. So they used, for example, forums about cars, travel destinations or pets. The surveys examined in great detail how individuals acted offline how they formed online relationships, and how they viewed these online relationships. 
Participants were then sent a follow-up survey roughly two years later. This asked similar questions in an effort to see if the initial responses and views had changed over that time. Obviously, a huge amount of data was gathered, but several strong conclusions could be drawn. Firstly, and this seems obvious to us today, people can form long-lasting and very genuine, stable relationships online through self-disclosure. Secondly, that these relationships are typically stable and long-lasting because of the high levels of self-disclosure that have been involved in the process. Fairly obviously, this study used surveys, which are a self-reporting method. This always introduces the possibility, indeed even the probability, of some bias and subjectivity being included. That said, on the other hand, this study did use a relatively large sample size. It had a high level of ecological validity. It studied actual people in real-world scenarios and actual chat rooms, rather than participants in a confined and controlled laboratory experiment. However, this does mean that there wasn't perfect control of variables. Gating is a process which limits how much any individual self-discloses. Obstacles often known as gates, prevent people from self-disclosing and therefore from forming intimacy and relationships online. These gates can be many and varied, like personal appearance, sense of dress, personal habits, behaviours, lack of social skills, inherent shyness, sometimes even religion and culture or even age. These gates tend to be much more obvious when you meet an individual face to face, but they can easily be hidden when talking to someone online. Chatting online hides many gates and cues which reveal them. There's no body language to analyse or facial expressions to read, for example. Because of this lack of gates, the chances of spontaneous self-disclosure is much higher. This self-disclosure also happens much quicker. McKenna conducted some further research, also in 2002, which looked into this at a deeper level. This research concluded that individuals were much more likely to get on and form a friendship or romantic relationship if they'd met online before meeting face to face. Once again, this is a relatively normal concept to us today, but back in the early 2000s, this was extremely unusual. However, this would suggest that the absence of gating online leads to people finding it much easier to form deep and long-lasting stable relationships, be they friend-based or be they romantic.